Okay, lesson one, setting up your uh, template, set, setting up your frame. I'm going to just have to assume that those of you that have Bryce have played around with a little bit, you know a little of what some of the buttons do. But the very first thing that I'm going to show you guys is how I set up all 100% of my shots for my units. I'm going to go over to this big fat render button, double click it. No, I don't want to do that. Double click it. Select the IMAX setting just to maximize uh, the screen so my entire screen is filled with it, this as you can see. Next what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the camera. Select the third button from the top. That's the link to parent uh, button. I'm going to drag it and I'm going to select the ground plane. The camera is now linked to the ground plane. Whenever I rotate it, whenever I move it, the camera will move along with whatever object. This this goes with everything. I use it, the link button with everything. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the camera again, and I'm going to do the fourth button down. It's called the track object. What this does is, it makes uh, whatever object you select, it makes it aim at another object. In this instance, if, when I click the attributes, I click the second tab over for linking. I do track object. For the camera, it's going to automatically point to it. If you select another object, it's going to point a certain face to it, whether it be the X plus or Y, I mean, the X plus or minus face, Y, Z, whatever. It's going to paint a face towards an object, like center of mass. Next what I'm going to do, go to attributes for the camera. I'm going to set the location of the camera at these coordinates. X is minus 4500. Y for height 3500 and Z 4500. Field of view goes to 1, 1 degree field of view. Camera basically disappears from the director's view, can't hardly see it. Switch to here, switch to camera view. Can't really hardly see much because there's too much haze. Go to sky and fog. I spent a long time trying to get just the right balance of shadows and colors. When I first started making units back in 2003, I had a gray background. I thought it worked, but it didn't. This blue background with no haze is the best one that I could come up with. The best balance of colors, shadows, everything. This little uh, family of uh, shapes down here lets me select every shape. What I did is I just selected, uh, select all planes. It got me the ground plane without actually clicking on it, without screwing things up by moving with it. Control Z, put it back. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give it a color. Simple and fast. Good old fashioned standby maroon. Looking up at this window, it's on automatic update so you can see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Now I'm just going to import an object that I have, just a really rinky dink airplane, just so so I can have an, an object to uh, show you some things. A little terrible little thing right here, a little panther. This it's a little nobody, a little low polygon unit. Just going to show this as an example. I'm currently now in, in the director's view. You can tell because it has a little director's chair up here in this corner. Click it. Now I'm, I'm on the camera view. This is the view that you use to animate everything. Right now, my airplane is currently pointing in the wrong direction. I'm going to click the attributes, make it point wrong direction make a point in the southeast direction. This is what I always use for my default. I'm going to double click this again to change the size of my screen and change it to 240 by 240. Alright, now it looks like your standard civilization uh, southeast view. Now I'm going to show you something. I'm going to select the ground plane and then I'm going to rotate it. As you can see, it, it appears that 
you're stationary while the object is moving, but I have in fact selected the ground plane. The reason why this is so is because the camera, when I told you in the very beginning, the camera is now pointed directly at the ground plane and is also linked to the movement of the ground plane. So whenever you do animations, no matter what you do for the animations, I'm going to do a little simple thing, add a keyframes. You don't have to change anything. If you change your view, nothing messes up. Change my view again. Of course, this is a very sloppy way to do it. Not exact, but I'm just showing this as an example. Change attributes back to zero, back to normal. Go back to here. Go back to my director's view. Back to a big fat screen. For my sky presets, this will all be in a file I'm going to post on my uh, tutorials page. But the actual numbers for ambient shadows is at 20, and it's just the white shadows. Fog color 0, 0.0. Haze also 0, and it's white cloud everything else and also had link sun to view link sun to view this just came from many many years and months of experience of just trying out different views for my civilization units it just came out as the best balance of color and shadow that I could find I don't know if you can see this on the YouTube video, but there is a line coming from the camera to the very center of the plane, and that's just a, denotes what the camera is pointed to. It's way, way, way up there. If you can barely see the camera, it's zoomed around right here. I'm going to show you something. I am currently in the director's view way underneath the, uh, the landscape. I'm going to rotate the plane. The plane is moving. The camera is moving. The object, the aircraft, is not moving at all. That is how you uh, do your different views without screwing up any of your animation. Keep in mind I'm still in the director's view. I'm here in a, in a d different place. I'm going to press the play button down here. You can see the aircraft moving. Advance it back to frame zero. I moved complete different position in my director's view. Press play again. I didn't mess anything up. Now I'm going to switch it to the camera view and I'm going to move around. Let's just an example, I'm going to advance the keyframes to about halfway down to the timeline, and I'm going to move the camera a bit. Okay? Advance it back to zero. Guess what? I just screwed up all of my animation because I made the camera move. Don't ever do that. To fix it, Bryce automatically makes a keyframe. This little key button down here, for those of you who do not know about this yet. At frame zero, I'm at the correct angle, I'm at the correct position. But when I advance it forward to the next keyframe, that's when I made my first mistake. Get rid of it, press the minus key. You may not notice it now, but I, I just erased the keyframe. Advance it back, press play. Everything is back as it should be. Right now, I'm going to I'm going to keep this little aircraft in here, but I'm going to save it. Save it as a template, put it on my desktop, and have it for you guys to use. Not only does it have the colors for the background, the settings for the sky, but it's also got the, the same colors I use for my civ, uh, civ color and also my canopies. You know, just as a little bonus. Save. And that is that.